Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. Hey, we got a show today. They're going to be down with the kids and legit. All right, babe. You know, we're going to do some adulting. Uh, uh, do you know what these words mean? I don't. Yeah. I'm not even sure I'm using them right. A couple. But on today's episode, here's where your favorite slang words actually came from, yo. <laughs> I'm going after the younger crowd. Welcome to another episode of Man or So Smart. I am Lou Gallagher. And I'm Corvette Ronnie. Nice to have you with us. Thanks for watching today. We appreciate it. Hope you'll enjoy the show. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, like it. And while you're at it, if, you know, between you and me, if you could subscribe to our channel and then click that bell right there, you'll get notifications each time a new show comes out. Don't tell Ronnie that, though, because he'll go crazy. Like Ronnie, the, we're ready to go. It's like the cone of silence when you put your hand up. <laughs> it's like the cone of Conan's hair right here. All right. All right, this first word. Yeah. Legit. Yo. Yeah, legit. Uh, most people think this word originated with MC Hammer after he released his 1991 hit, Too Legit to Quit. But it didn't. It did not. Well, apparently. tell me more. Yeah, actually, it showed up during the latter half of the 19th century in theater groups. Liberals. Hmm. They use the word to refer to legitimate drama, also known as a well-written piece. Oh, okay. Ever wonder if slang words were, you know, used, uh, words you use regularly are regional? Hmm. Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, some uh, of them are. Uh, for sure, for sure. Yep. Uh, especially big city versus little city. Yes. All right, next up today, adulting. <laughs> Where did that come from? Well, adulting is a very popular word among millennials who look often use who often use it jokingly when they engage in adult-like behavior, such as preparing taxes, buying a home, you know, important stuff like mowing the lawn, getting a job. Yeah. The ex yeah. <laughs> the exact origins are a little murky, and I, I'm not good on the murky. But it supposedly first showed up in a 2008 Twitter post, you know, on the internet. Oh, yeah. It then took six years, wow, it's holding in there strong, to enter the mainstream and gain notoriety on Urban Dictionary in June 2014. So adulting, doing adult stuff hmm. when it's not expected that you might. Right, yeah. All right, this next one. Yeah. I was a little unsure. You and me both, brother. Yeah, when I first heard it, mm -hmm. but it kind of now makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, throwing shade. Okay. Yeah, throwing shade. Seems like it could be an Olympic sport. <laughs> uh, and it, you know, clearly requires some skill. The word was first propelled into mainstream after its excessive use on RuPaul's reality TV show Drag Race. Oh, right. And now everyone from fathers to grandmothers uses it to carry out passive aggressive acts online and in real life. Uh, if you want to know how true shade throwers perform, look no further than the stars of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, brother. Uh, it's so shady over there, it's hard to imagine how any of them see clearly. We are the uh, real house husbands of Orangevale. Yes. <laughs> it's a new show. It's coming to Fox. You watch. Next up is ghosting. Um, want to know where that came from? No matter how you use it, ghosting never means anything good, even if it's ghosts. The act of ghosting which describes someone quietly exiting an online conversation, which I do all the time. You know why? Because I go to bed. You know, if you don't get back to me in five minutes, I go to bed. Right, I'm, I'm asleep. Right. Has become popular because of the explosion of the dating app culture over the last few years. There's no clean origin story for this word, but it seems to have organically arisen in the post-2012 Dating app boom. Swipe left, swipe left, swipe left. <laughs> not that I would know. Of course not. I don't no. spend a lot of time on the dating sites. You know why? Why frowns on it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it, it, well, it's expensive, too. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I can barely afford one woman. How could I afford two? Mm -hmm. uh, this next one, basic. Basic. Okay. Basic. Mm -hmm. So it's, bas it's shortened from another slang term. Basic bitch. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, I see. I get it. Yeah. Basic is a uh, an adjective to describe somebody who slavishly follows the mainstream and is a conformist according to uh, youknowyourmeme.com. 
There is nothing original or special about this person, although the term gained more relevance in 2017. It's been around for a while. Basic first appeared on, in the Urban Dictionary in 2009, but went down in 80s music history with the hit jam from Climax. Meet me in the ladies' room. I remember that song. I used to play that song on the radio. I've never heard that song. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's a jam. It's my jam. <laughs> Next up, Ron, you know what you are? I'll tell you what you are. You want to know what you are? I'll tell you what you are. You want to know? I know what I am. Salty. I am salty. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> well, no longer is salty simply used to describe food. <laughs> it now applies to people. According to Online Etymology Dictionary, salty has transitioned from its 15th century definition of impregnated with salt, which is painful in its of itself. That hurts. To its 1866 meaning of racy, to its modern meaning of angry or irritated. See? Yeah. Yeah. A curmudgeon, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which gained relevance in 1938, but has been heard spoken by teens and millennials well, right up until this point in 2018. Yep. Uh, this next one. Huh? I use this a lot. Yeah, I know you do. Hipster. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us the definition, where it came from. Ah, uh, the hipster. A yes. person who was originally celebrated for being on the cutting edge of a trend before it became mainstream. Now it's known as a know-it-all who oh. wants to appear cooler than the masses. I know people like that. Oh, I know so many hipsters. Uh, in all seriousness, the word is a, a derivation of the word hip, which means be tapped into the cultural mainstream. Yeah. Uh, it first gained traction in the 20th century jazz era when people flocked to African-American neighborhoods to participate in the budding music scene. Okay. Word faded out in the 50s, but resurfaced in the 90s, and it stayed for quite a while. I, it seems to me that hipster is a little more... Uh, contemporary than even the 90s. I know where hip comes from, but where's the stir come from? Yeah. <laughs> Not the same thing. All the wrist. Okay. Next up is photobomb. Oh. Ronnie, you were telling me you just did this the other day. I love some photobomb. All right. It's my favorite thing to do. Where did it come from? For some odd reason, the act of spoiling a photograph. <laughs> that's Ronnie right there. Oh, that's that. got Ronnie written all over oh, it. Oh, that's me. Uh, spoiling a photograph by unexpectedly popping into the picture is pretty satisfying. Photobombing has been around for a while, with Google Trends indicating that it was used as far back as 20, uh, 2009. But this past year seemed to re-energize the word with A-list celebrities photobombing all over the place. There was Tom Hanks photobombing a wedding, I remember that. Uh, Justin Timberlake photobombing Emma Stone on the red carpet, I don't think I saw that. I don't remember that. And Jennifer Lawrence, who just photobombs anybody. <laughs> yeah. My favorite one is there is a Bubba Gumps in Monterey. Mm -hmm. And they have a bench out front, and it has like a suitcase on it or something. Uh -huh. It's made to look like straight from the, the Forrest, uh, Gump. Forrest Gump movie. I want to mm -hmm. call it Forrest Finn. Yeah. Straight from the <laughs> Forrest Gump movie. And it's got a big pair of shoes on the ground that are cemented there. You can slip your feet underneath them. And it's an unbelievably popular tourist spot. I bet to take it a is. Picture. Yeah. And right behind is the uh, Bubba Gump's restaurant. Uh -huh. And and right, right behind where I always photobomb people, is a little gift shop. So you can stand in the gift shop and you can watch and you can tell right when they're ready to take a picture and you walk by and you just kind of put your head down at that level. And <laughs> hopefully, and it's not as great as it used to be because now they look at their phone and they can see their picture immediately. Right. Back in the days of film cameras, they wouldn't know until they got home. That, <laughs> Who is that son of a bitch? I went 3,000 miles to take a picture of some guy I don't know. <laughs> All right, <laughs> this one, this one's good, and it doesn't mean the same thing as it used to. Okay. Uh, dope. Oh yeah. That, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. that's dope. Oh. There are multiple definitions of the word dope: drugs, a fool, thick, lub thick lubricant, and something good. More recently, the word has been to describe people, things, or situations that are impressive. However, the word originates from the Dutch word "dupe," which means sauce. Uh, then they further refine the word to dope and use it to refer to idiots. That's what I've referred to as a dope. Yeah. Uh, then in the early 1800s, it came to describe any thick lubricant, which I have, they use dope uh, lubricant uh, on oh, pipe, pipe. Yeah, dope. yeah, pipe right. Dope. Yeah. That's right. Uh, eventually, it came to be more specifically described the goop-like brown gunk known as opium. 
Uh, so well, this went south fast. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, we should read ahead. <laughs> Yeah. No. Are you kidding? <laughs> Put in that kind of effort. Yeah. And finally today on our list, wino. No, I'm not talking about my wife. You go downtown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know some people truly love their wine, but why they refer them to themselves as winos have yet to be determined until now. One of the first recorded uses of the word came from Jack Black's, no, not that Jack Black, 1926 hobo memoir, You Can't Win. Mm -hmm. There's also that incident from the 90s when Johnny Depp and Winona Ryder split up after about three years together, and he famously altered his Winona Forever tattoo to Wino Wino. Forever. (laughs) (laughs) If he's got nothing else, he's got a sense of humor. Come on. Come on, care who you are. Yeah, that's a a good one. Okay, so that will wrap up our list today of uh, slang words and their origins. If you have some you'd like to add and we missed, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. That's a kick in the pants. If you comment, we enjoy them and we most, 99.9% of the time, we reply to you if it warrants a reply. If you're a hipster, we're not going to (laughs) reply. No, either (laughs) hip or stir. Yeah. And uh, if you enjoyed our show today, we appreciate that. Give it a like. Please subscribe to our channel. It's very easy to do. And also, when you do that, if you click the bell, you'll get notifications each time a new show comes out. Uh, I'm Lou Gallagher. Hey, don't ghost us either. Uh, please. Yeah, and I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you if we're here. <laughs> and don't make a quick exit out of the conversation. Yeah, don't throw shade no, in please. the comments. No throwing shade. Later. <laughs>